Glory to Jesus Christ. My friends, among the great sorrows of our day is the increasing number of people who simply lack any connection with other people on a personal level. And there's a trend which has been called atomization, that is, an increasing trend for people to find themselves without a sense of community, be it by neighborhood or, or friendship or even family. Nature itself seeks to provide the most elemental community for us, for none of us are born without having a mother and a father. None of us are born without, physically speaking, a family. By the sad effect of sin, even this most elemental building block of society, this most foundational connective relationship, the family, it can fracture, it can fall apart, it can even cease to be. It can even be used toward evil ends and become a destructive relationship. Now, that's not a very cheerful thought, especially in this time of the year in which even the secular world tries to turn its mind to thoughts of good cheer, of family, of home, and of hearth. And that's all right. Perhaps not a cheerful thought. But on the other hand, let us see the challenge that this atomization brings to us. It's not cheerful, but it is a challenge. And perhaps we might rise to that challenge. As we come closer to the great celebration of our Lord's Nativity, this second Sunday before that great feast, the Church calls all of us to remember and to celebrate the family of the Lord. In specific, we are to celebrate the great ancient forefathers of our Lord Jesus Christ. For as we hear in the Gospels, our Lord himself is true God and true man. And as true man, he is himself both the new Adam and a son of Adam. It's a great and treasured mystery to consider our Lord's genealogy, to consider those men and those women who were his forebears, who looked forward to and provided for the coming of the Redeemer. We see in them a line of very human people, living very human lives, and ultimately dying very human deaths. And yet, from them, from their lineage, comes the bringer of salvation, he who triumphs over death itself. And this is the manner, my friends, in which grace often works. It takes nature. Even our broken and sinful human nature, it takes nature to itself and it elevates it far beyond itself. Grace takes a broken nature and with it, it crafts a perfect supernature. Grace elevates the humble. It turns tears of sorrow into joy. It holds the broken heart with tenderness and it fills it with its own supernatural love. And so it is from the genealogy of the ancients, flawed and broken men and women in their own right, yes, but still receptive and cooperative with divine grace. He who is the author of grace thereby takes our nature unto himself and is made man. God himself becomes a member of the human family. And in so doing, in binding himself by grace to the human family, he makes it also possible to be bound one to another, all of us, in that same grace, by that same grace. He offers us that opportunity to have community one with another through Him. He who is communion Himself. 
For while the sad result of sin is that our nature is fallen, and our families are fractured, and our love has grown cold, the happy result of grace is that all of this can be repaired and renewed, and repaired and renewed in a fashion even more wonderful than that from which it began. And we hear this in the Gospel reading today, don't we? We hear this call. It's a very appropriate reading for a day on which we contemplate the genealogical family of him who is God himself. In the parable of the man making a great supper, we hear the words given by that man to his servants. He says to them, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the feeble, and the blind and the lame. Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. That is the Lord himself speaking right there. Compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Even naturally speaking, my friends, is there any place which seems more welcoming and more welcome, more stable, more right, than a house which is filled with those who love each other. We, who on account of our poverty, our feebleness, our blindness, our lameness, we who find ourselves on the streets and in the lanes of the city, with seemingly no fixed abode, no family home, no means of earthly support, we today hear the words of the servants of the Master. They call us. They, in fact, compel us to come. Come to the family of grace. Come to the feast of him who has taken to himself our nature. Come, fill the house of him whom the entire universe could not contain. In a word, their message is simply, Come home. Come home. The forefathers of God are our forefathers too. Their family is our family. And no earthly failing can prevail against the familial bond of grace, which is the faith which we share and the hope which we each hold safe in our hearts and the charity, the love, which binds us to each other and to Almighty God himself.